Hello everyone, my name is Nalini and today I'm going to recite my poem, Girls Who Refuse to Die, from the book, Still We Sing. It's not about those who get flushed out surreptitiously as a scarlet blob between thighs. Neither is it about those who are scraped out of wombs with rusty tools of quacks in a back alley nor those who are buried alive or abandoned on dumpsters to be eaten by wild dogs. It's about those who make it into the world midst middle class moral compunctions, no less despised or resented. Guilt is not only for evildoers, it's also the gift of our collective consciousness to the girls who turn a deaf ear to laments that follow their birth and refuse to die. It finds roots in the softest hearts and feeds on affection for disgruntled progenitrix, unfair tutelage, sucking out the last stretches of self-love until they are housebroken to be good girls for the rest of their lives. A good girl is the one who can never do enough or be enough to assuage the trauma she caused by simply being born. So she carries a thousand deaths beneath her tongue and swallows one every time she has to choose between being happy and being good, yet falls short every single time. It's not about those missing girls who turned into statistics in census registers. It's about those who lead invisible lives. Persona non grata in homes they dare not call their own. Stuck between the gilded frames of happy family portraits. Entirely dispensable if the honor of the clan so demands. Sacrificial lamps to pander to the fragile male egos. Of those who think they own them. It's not about those voiceless victims of patrimony that were throttled before they could utter a sound. It's about those who are treated as trophies, wrapped in silks, dripping with diamonds. They do just fine as long as they know when to smile coyly and when to retreat into shadows. God forbid if they ever acquire a mind of their own or sprout tongue. It's about those who break through the cracks of concrete like daisies on a busy sidewalk and quote whirlwinds. The girls who refuse to die. Some turn into sp fire spitters even if it singes their own feathers. Some turn into rainbow keepers refusing to be confined within drab walls of conventions. Some turn into ocean cuddlers spreading their arms wide to embrace their destiny and all those who share it. Some turn into sword swallowers gutting the barb chives in the pit of their stomach. Some turn into fragrance detectors, sniffing out the sore hearts to seal them as they heal themselves. Some turn into fake family fishers, smiling and posing for gilded frames as their inards melt. Some turn into pecan pickers, harvesting, shelling, husking, and ginning their lives to make some sense of it. Some turn into silver unicorn chasing elusive cotton candy clouds into the twilight of life. Some turn into everyday goddesses balancing domesticity with dream catchers and hang on to the silver lining. They survive, somehow, the girls who refuse to die. To maintain the semblance of normalcy, so that we continue to take pride in the heritage that persecutes them systematically.